afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Lizzie and I work at the Lapworth Museum of Geology. And I'm going to be talking you through some of this fossil detectives activity today. We're joined by my colleague, uh, Arona, as well. She's managing our chat box. So throughout the session, I'm going to be asking questions and you can type in your answers, you can join in. If you have any questions throughout, type them into the chat box as well. Um, Arona has already said hello to you all there so that you can find it. And as I say, any questions, any answers, type them in. Um, only myself and Arona will be able to see what you're typing. So don't worry too much about um, if you're just having a guess or you're not sure. Likewise, if you just want to sit and you just want to watch and see the session, that's absolutely fine as well. You don't have to feel like you need to be joining in the chat if you don't want to. You might notice that um, there is the option for a live transcript along the bottom of the screen. If you want to turn that off, there is the option to do so where it says more and there's three little dots. If you click on that and choose the live transcript option, you can actually turn that off for if you don't want it there. Um, so we will get started. So as you know, this afternoon is all about fossil detectives. So we're going to be exploring what fossils can tell us about life on Earth and the animals and plants that were alive. Now, some of you might have access to our activity sheet, and this is completely optional. You don't have to be doing this as we go through, but there is the opportunity to answer some of the questions for yourself as we go along. There is a little colouring section too, so if you just want to have a little colour in whilst you're listening, you can do that. If you haven't downloaded the sheet and you don't have it in front of you, you can either click on the link that Arona has sent to have it on the screen. You might want to have a go afterwards, or again, you might just not want to do it at all, and that's absolutely fine. It's just a completely optional activity. When you're doing the sheet, um, you'll see little stars on the screen where I'm talking. The little stars mean there's an answer for on the sheet somewhere. So for example, here we've got a green star, which would mean it would match with the green box, which is all about Rory the dinosaur. So um, yeah, we'll make a start. Um, so here we've got Rory the dinosaur. I couldn't talk about fossils at the Lapworth Museum of Ge uh, Geology without mentioning Rory. So to get us started, does anybody know what kind of dinosaur Rory is? Oh, we've got some really good guesses. Some of you know the kind of dinosaur. And some of you are guessing T. rex or Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, I can see where that guess is coming from. We've got the large head and the small arms, but Rory is actually slightly smaller than a T. rex or a Tyrannosaurus rex. Rory is a smaller dinosaur than that. So does anyone know a smaller dinosaur that Rory could be? Fantastic, you're all brilliant. Yes, Rory is an Allosaurus dinosaur. So Allosaurus um, lived during the end of the Jurassic period, so they weren't actually alive at the same time as Tyrannosaurus rex, um, but we can see that they've got a similar structure, similar skeleton as a T-Rex. Now Rory is a fantastic fossil for us to have in the museum because Rory is almost complete. We almost have every single bone that Rory would have had when it was alive. So it was a very, very good fossil find. Rory's 95% complete. You can see that there are some teeth missing here and there are some smaller bones which have got slightly broken or lost before fossilization. But we have almost all of Rory, which means that we can learn a lot about Rory from looking at these bones. So first of all, what do you think Rory ate? Fantastic answers coming through. Um, yes, Rory would have been a meat eater. Now, just a reminder, um, if you are doing the activity sheet, you can see that there's a star in the corner. This is because the um, an answer is here, Rory the Allosaurus. So that's an answer for one of your questions. So just keep a lookout for these stars. 
So we think Rory ate meat. Rory was a carnivore. That's a scientific word for a meat eater. And how do we know that Rory ate meat from looking at this skeleton? What is the evidence that Rory was a meat eater? Brilliant, yes. A lot of you saying that Rory was a meat eater and we can tell this from these sharp pointed teeth. Sharp pointed teeth are perfect for eating meat. They pierce and they slice and they're perfect for eating meat. So this tells us that Rory's diet was completely meat. So Rory was a meat eater or a carnivore. Do you think that Rory was a predator? or prey? Do you think Rory was a hunter or that Rory was hunted? So if we have a little look at Rory's body, we can actually tell that Rory would have been a very good hunter, a very good predator. So what can you see that would make Rory a very good predator or a very good hunter? What's the evidence? Some of you have already said some good ideas already. Brilliant. So some of us have said Rory had long legs. Long legs compared to the rest of the body tells us that Rory was able to move quickly, could run very fast. Um, some of you who know Allosaurus, Rory has a very long tail. You can't see it in this picture, but the very long tail is very good for balancing so that Rory wouldn't fall over. Um, and yes, as some of you have said, Rory's also got these fantastic claws. Now these claws are very pointed and they've also got this fantastic curve to them. So these claws are very good at gripping hold of things and then not letting them go. This curve means that things wouldn't be able to wiggle free very easily once Rory had the animal in its grasp. So Rory was definitely a predator, definitely a meat eater. And we can work all of this out just from looking at these bones. Now, Rory's bones are about 160 million years old. So they're very, very old. We don't have any of the soft bits of Rory, we don't have any of the skin or the, the muscles. We've worked out all of this just from looking at Rory's bones. So we can work out how Rory lived, but what's amazing about Rory is that we can also work out how it might have died. So if you look at Rory's feet down here, here we have a very healthy foot at the back and this foot is slightly less healthy. This foot looks slightly different. If we zoom in, what looks a bit strange on this foot? What looks out of place? Yeah, fantastic answer. So if we have a little look here in this on this middle bone here, we can see that there's a large lump, a large blob, and that blob wasn't on the healthy foot. This is where Rory has broken its bone. Now, the bone breaking didn't kill Rory, and um, Rory survived that, and we know because the bone has healed, but it didn't heal very well. In fact, it's got a bit infected before it's healed and therefore it's got this extra large mass on it. It's got this extra blob. And when we look at the rest of Rory's body, we can work out that there are a few more injuries just like this one. So the other main injury we can find is on Rory's rib. So this is on the side of Rory's body. This is a healthy rib, nice and straight all the way down. Here we have a broken rib that hasn't healed very well. Again, it's at a bit of an angle and we've got this large mass, this extra blob of cartilage. So these are injuries from where Rory has hurt itself. 
So if we have a look, we've got the, the broken foot down here. We've got the broken rib here. Using that evidence, using those clues, what could have happened to Rory? How could Rory have got these injuries? Oh, fantastic answers. Yes, it could be that Rory was in a fight. It could have been that Rory was fighting another Allosaurus or another dinosaur. It could have been that Rory was damaged by an animal that it was trying to chase. Maybe it was something that was defending itself. It could have been that Rory just fell over, like we might trip over sometimes. And um, Rory was a very, very heavy animal. Rory would have weighed one and a half tons. So that's a lot of weight. So if Rory tripped over and fell on its side, all that weight would fall onto these bones. So that could have been how Rory, Rory broke its bones. Now, we don't know exactly how Rory got these injuries. There were no humans at the same time as dinosaurs like Rory which means that there was nobody to see what happened and then tell other people. We can only work it out using the evidence like you have. And from the evidence and looking at a few other injuries that we can find on Rory, we think Rory did trip. Perhaps it was running towards something or away from something, but we know that it probably tripped while it was running, which is how it got these this damage, these injuries. They didn't kill Rory, he survived, it healed, but how would having a sore foot or a foot that hasn't healed very well, how might that affect Rory? What might that stop Rory from doing? Think about everything that we've already said about Rory before. Brilliant answers, yes. If Rory's got a sore foot or a foot that hasn't healed very well, Rory's not going to be able to run very well. And if Rory can't run very well, it means it's not going to be very good at hunting. So we think that Rory wasn't able to hunt for its food anymore. It wasn't able to catch its prey. And we think very sadly that Rory might have starved to death. And although that's sad, it's amazing that we can work all of this out from these very, very old bones. All of these clues are still in Rory's fossil, which is incredible. And that's why fossils and fossil detectives are so important, because they can use this evidence to work out what animals were like in the past and even what the earth was like in the past. Now, if you've been to our museum before, if you've been to the Lapworth, then you'll know that this is our main gallery. This is our evolution of life gallery. So this room is everything to do with life on Earth. We start with the first life on Earth, the earliest life in this corner, and we can travel through time to each of the cases all the way around until we get to modern day or modern humans at this end over here. And it's the fossils which can tell us about what life was like through this history of our Earth. Now, our Earth is very, very old. In fact, our Earth is 4.5 billion years old. So it's very, very, very old. And um, you can see here a little picture of a human, a human like you or I, a modern human. Um, humans haven't been on the earth that long compared to how old it is. In fact, it's only been in sort of the more recent times that we've had humans. But we can see from these little pictures that other animals have been around a lot longer. So here we've got fossil fish. This is where fossil fish have been found in the fossil record. We found large trees, which tell us that there were plants on land by this time in the fossil record. And we've even found dinosaur bones like Rory, which can tell us that there were dinosaurs 
alive at this time. So the fossil record can tell us all about this life on Earth. Now, Rory is amazing. As I said, we're lucky to have Rory because Rory is almost complete. We have all the, it's a, um, we have the bones, so we have body fossils of Rory, and we can work out almost anything we want to from studying these bones. But sometimes we don't get the bones of animals or we don't get complete fossils. And we have to look carefully at the fossils we do find to work out what they're telling us, to work out the clues behind them. So here we've got two big slabs of sandstone, of redstone, and they've got fossils in. So without me telling you anything else, what can you see in these slabs of stone? Now, you might have given me some correct answers. If you're still not sure what we're looking at, I'm going to mark around the blobs that we see so that you can see if that helps you work out what's there. Absolutely fantastic. Lots of you have got uh, fantastic answers. Yes, what we're looking at here are footprints of animals or a particular animal. And we're not looking at the, the foot bones. We haven't got the bones of the feet. These are actually footprints left behind by an animal after it's walked on sand. So these footprints can tell us a lot about the animal that made them. We can compare these footprints to other fossil footprints that we have found in the past. We can compare them to modern day animals. It can help us to work out what animal made them. So from looking at these footprints and from knowing what time in Earth's history they came from, we're able to work out that these footprints were made by this animal here, a diadectomorph. And we can see that the diadectomorph, it had four legs, it's a tetrapod, and it would have been an amphibian. We had a lot more amphibians at this time. So it lived in the water most of the time, but it would come up onto land maybe to find food, maybe to find a mate, and then it would go back into the water again. Now, the amazing thing about these tr um, track fossils, about these footprints, is that we can even work out how this animal might have moved by looking at where its footprints landed, looking at how far away they are from each other, we're able to get an idea of the movement of this animal. And so that's another amazing thing about fossils. They can tell us how animals were moving. Now, at the beginning of this um, little video, we did actually see um, what the environment was like, what the land was like. We can work this out by looking at the rocks, so where the footprint, the, the, the rocks that the footprints were formed in, but we can also use fossils of plants and trees. So often when we think about fossils, we think about animals. We might think about dinosaurs or mammoths, but actually we get fossils of plants and trees as well. And they're very, very important to work out what life was like on earth. So if we have a little look, we have got a fossil of a plant here. So this plant was called a seed fern. It looked a little bit like ferns that we might see um, in forests today, but it did have seeds. So this kind of plant has gone extinct. Now, we've got a picture of our seed fern fossil here from in the museum. It's 300 million years old. Um, and we get fantastic detail of the shape of the leaves and of, of the plant. 
So if we have a look, we have actually got a 3D model of this fossil that we can explore. So hopefully you can see my screen and we can zoom in and we can explore the patterns and the shapes of this fossil. Now, this is something that you can do at home as well. Um, Arona will share a link to our Sketchfab um, web page for you. There are a lot of other fossils that you can look at from the museum too. And if we've got a bit of time um, today, we'll have a look at a few more. But it's amazing to be able to explore the fossil in a bit more detail than you might see it in the museum. Now, we can actually work out what kinds of trees and plants. Um, sorry, I've lost my PowerPoint. There we go. We can actually work out what kinds of trees and plants were um, around and living together. So if you think about a forest, you don't just have one kind of tree in that forest. We have a lot of different species, a lot of different types. So by finding fossils, which were all made at the same time in the same place, we can work out what kinds of trees and plants live together. Here we've got what we think our seed fern would have looked like. These are what we think the seeds were like. And you can see that pattern of the leaves coming off the stems here. We also have fossils in the museum called horsetails. Um, they look a little bit like bamboo in the middle. And we actually still have horsetails today. So it's a very old plant which has survived for millions of years. And then my favourite of these fossils is this fossil here. So this is a fossil of a trunk of a plant called Lepidodendron, but we can call it a scale tree. And that's because of this amazing pattern all over the trunk of the tree. You can see it looks a little bit like a plat or, or scales, which is how it gets its name. And if we find all of these fossils together, we can tell that all these plants lived together at around the same time. Now, here's an example. This is an example of how we've looked at fossils and we've worked out what they would have looked like in real life. But we can do that with animal fossils too. So if we have a look, if we dive under the, underwater, we're able to see our ichthyosaur fossils in the museum. Now, if you did the Mary Anning session with us in February, you will have seen these fossils before. Here we've got a skull of a large ichthyosaur. So we've got the large eye here and that long streamlined shape for its, its skull. And then here we've got um, a younger ichthyosaur. This is actually only a baby ichthyosaur. That's why it's a lot, very different size. Um, but we've got the full skeleton of this one, the full body fossil. It's got that same large eye, that same shape of the skull, but we can also see the long tail that it would have used to swim as well. Now we can work out what this fossil would have looked like when it was alive by looking at the shape of the fossil, but also thinking about animals that are alive today. So this is what we think that the ichthyosaur looked like when it was alive. So what modern animals can you think of that look like this? Fantastic, lots of different answers. Um, dolphins, whales, swordfish, sailfish, sharks, and um, all of the animals that you're naming live in the same place. They live underwater. They live quite deep down underwater. They all eat the same kinds of food. They're all predators that eat fish and other sea creatures. They can all swim quickly. They all can chase their prey very well. Now, if we have a look at the skeleton of some of these modern day animals, we can see how similar they actually are. So here we've got our ichthyosaur and our ichthyosaur fossil. Here we've got a dolphin and this is the skeleton of a dolphin. 
So we can see that it's got the same shaped body here. We can see that same shape all the way along to the back of the tail. We can see that the ribs are in the same sort of place as our ichthyosaur here. And we can see it's got that same uh, long skull shape with the teeth inside, just like our dolphin here. We can even make out that it has similar uh, bone structure as the paddles. Now, an ichthyosaur isn't related to a dolphin at all. Ichthyosaurs are reptiles, dolphins are mammals, but they've got this very similar shape, which they have evolved over time because it gives them an advantage. It lets them catch their prey. They're able to move quickly. They can eat more prey, they can eat more food, and they can pass on these, this shape to the next generation. Um, some of you said that it looked a bit like a swordfish. So here we've got a swordfish. We can see that although the bones look slightly different, slightly different places, when we look at things like the eye, it's very similar. We can see this large eye socket with the bone around the rim, just like our ichthyosaur here. So by comparing these fossils to modern day animals, we can work out what looks the same, what looks different, and that can help us create an image, paint a picture of what the animal would have looked like when it was alive. So we know that ichthyosaurs ate fish, so here's a fossil fish. They would have eaten ammonites, which are these spiraling fossils here. You might have seen them before. They would have eaten belemnites. This is the shell of one of those squid-like creatures. And they would have even eaten smaller ichthyosaurs as well. But how do we know what animals were eating in the past? How can we work that out? How can we tell? Well, sometimes fossils actually show us. So sometimes we can actually look at a fossil and look at what's inside its stomach. So here we've got our baby ichthyosaur, and you can actually work out that it was eating those belemnites because belemnites have got little hooks on the ends of their tentacles. And those hooks are very hard to digest, they're very hard. So our baby ichthyosaur has actually got those little hooks inside its stomach which tells us that it was eating the belemnites when it was alive. Sometimes we might be able to tell from looking at fossils like this. Does anybody know what these are fossils of? Fantastic, you're all brilliant. Yes, we are looking at fossilized poo. We are looking at poos which animals did millions of years ago. Now, we don't always call them fossilized poo. We have a scientific word, which is coprolite, because it means the same thing. And coprolites or fossilized poos can tell us what animals were eating. We can scan them, we can look at the surfaces of them, and we can work out, and we can see some of those hard bits of animals that might not digest very well. So we might find fish scales, we might find bits of shell, bits of bone. We might even find very tough bits of plant that didn't break down um, when the animal was digesting it. So fossilized poos or coprolites can tell us a lot. And sometimes the answer is even more obvious than this. Here we have a fish which actually died in the middle of eating another fish. So this fossil shows us firsthand what this um, fossil was eating. So we can see that the fish was in the middle of eating. Maybe it just tried to eat too much and that's how it died. It might have been in the middle of eating when it got buried by lots of sand or sediment or mud. And that's how we ended up getting this fossil millions of years later. So. Sometimes the fossils just show us what we want to know. And sometimes we kind of have to work it out ourselves using our own knowledge. And the best way of doing this 
is to look at the shape of its teeth. So we've already done this with Rory. We've already seen that Rory has got long, sharp pointed teeth. And sharp pointed teeth are brilliant at eating meat. Animals which are meat eaters or carnivores have sharp or pointed teeth. Other dinosaurs, like our Myosaurus, have got very flat teeth in their cheeks and a bill like front of their mouth. So if we've got flat teeth or bill like front of um, mouth, then that means that our dinosaur or our animal is probably eating plants. Does anybody know what we call an animal that only eats plants? Fantastic, yes, we call them herbivores. So herbivores have no meat in their diet. And sometimes we might find a skull of a dinosaur or a skull of an animal, which has actually got two different types of teeth. So this is a heterodontosaurus, which actually means different teeth. And that's because it's got flat teeth and it's got sharp pointed teeth. A little bit like our own mouths as humans. We've evolved to have flat teeth at the back, our molars, and then we've got sharp pointed teeth in our canines and our incisors. And animals which have these teeth are good at eating both plants and meat. What do we call an animal that eats plants and meat? Brill, yes, we call these animals omnivores. So by looking at the teeth of the animal, we can work out what they were able to eat, what they were able to break down. Now, I chose our myosaurus as our um, herbivore because myosaurus is a really good example of how fossils can also show us how animals behaved, how animals lived. So myosaurus, which is this skull here, and this picture here, it actually means good mother dinosaur. You can see it's got its young around its legs here. And it was called the, um, the good mother dinosaur because when fossils have been found, um, adults have been found next to nests. So we have an example of where dinosaurs have been making nests to lay their eggs in. So some of the nests had eggs in them when they were found. Some of the nests had babies in. So the, the eggs had hatched and the babies had come out and they were living in the nest. So when we find fossils like this, we can work out that uh, this dinosaur, Myosaurus, probably looked after its young in its nest. So it probably went away and got plants and food for those babies and brought it back, like modern day birds sometimes do for their own young. And not all dinosaurs would have done this, or at least we don't have evidence of all dinosaurs doing this. And that's why it's special to our Myosaurus or this good mother dinosaur. We also know that this Myosaurus lived in herds or lived in groups because when fossils have been found, lots of them have been found together, which means that they've all lived together. So they probably lived in a herd or they probably lived in a colony, a little bit like how we might see things like elephants living today, rather than living on its own and doing hunting and looking for food always on its own. So fossils can tell us a lot about how animals behaved. Now I've got one more fossil which I'm going to tell you all about and that is our saber-toothed cat or our smilodon. But I want to see if you can work out some of the answers from what we've looked at. So this is our saber-toothed cat or smilodon. This is Diego from Ice Age which is what um, it's the kind of animal that Diego was. So just from looking at this skull, we know 
that our saber tooth cat was a carnivore. We know it ate meat. It's got these sharp pointed teeth inside its mouth and it's got these long sharp teeth on the outside. Do you think that our saber tooth cat was predator or prey? Yeah, fantastic. Yes, our saber tooth cat was definitely a predator. And we can tell because its eyes are facing forward, which is a good sign of a predator. It means that you can see what you're trying to hunt. And it also had a very large nose hole, which means that it probably had a very good sense of smell. So it was able to hunt out or sniff out what it was looking for. Another amazing thing about our saber tooth cat, my favorite thing, I'm going to show you now. So I'm just going to stop sharing the screen. So you should be able to see me big. And here we have got a saber tooth cat. So I've got the skull of a saber tooth cat here. Now, saber tooth cats, as you can see, got very, very big front teeth. Now, humans can open their mouths about 45 degrees. So humans can open their mouths about this wide. That's fine for us, but if that was how wide a saber tooth cat could open its mouth, it wouldn't be able to get much food in because the teeth would be in the way. It wouldn't be able to be bite into anything because the teeth would be a barrier. So our saber tooth cat could actually open its mouth 120 degrees. It could open its jaw this wide. Now you can see I can easily put my head into the mouth of that saber tooth cat. And it meant that our saber tooth cat could bite into whatever it wanted. It could get its mouth around whatever it was trying to catch. And then it could close its jaw around it and pierce it with these sharp pointed canine teeth at the front. So it was a terrifying predator. Now, on your activity sheet, there is a question. And the question is, what is this hole for? So this is where the eyes are. This is where the nose is. So what do you think this was for? Any guesses? I'll give you a clue if you're not sure. It's a saber-toothed cat. And it's something that cats have on their face, but humans don't. So it's between the nose and the eyes. Brilliant, yes. What we've got here are the whisker holes. So there's one on the other side as well. And this is where the whiskers would have connected to all the nerves inside the skull. So animals with whiskers can feel all the way to the end. They can, they've got senses, they're very, very, very sensitive. But for things to be sensitive, for us to be able to feel with things, they need to be connected to our nervous system inside our body. So these are the holes that let those whiskers connect inside the body. So any animals with these little holes here would have had whiskers when they were alive. So lions, tigers, cats, any animal you can think of with whiskers. So it's a good clue when we're looking at a skull. Okay, so now we're gonna have a little go at guessing the animal. So I'm going to show you a couple of fossils and give you a couple of clues and you're going to have a guess at what the animal is which all of this is about. So just have a guess, you can start guessing as soon as you want. I will show you the answer once I've finished giving the clues. So first of all we've got this fossil here and I have the fossil with me so we can see just how big it is, it's absolutely huge. So this might be a good clue of the size of the animal that we are 
thinking about. Okay, we also have this fossil. So that might give you another clue. So it's from the same animal. See if you can guess the animal. So this animal lived at the same time as Rory the Allosaurus. So it lived at the same time as Rory in the Jurassic period. It lived on land. Well done if you're guessing. We've got some bright guesses already. That's absolutely amazing. It was very large. You can tell that from the size of that footprint. It was a herbivore or a plant eater. It was a dinosaur. The fossil here was on its back. Last chance to have a guess. I'm going to show you the answer in a couple of seconds. Fantastic. If you're guessing, you've got, we've got so many correct guesses. Amazing. So well done if you said that these fossils were from a stegosaurus. Here we've got the back plate. So this is the plate on the, the, the back of the stegosaurus. And here we have the footprint of the stegosaurus. So very, very, very large feet. Um, the back plates might have been used as a way to cool down. They've got a big surface area, so they let out a lot of heat, maybe. They might have been a way of trying to attract a mate. So it might be the way that birds have amazingly coloured feathers. They might be able to have different colours of these. It's still a little bit of a mystery. People are still trying to come up with ideas of why the Stegosaurus had these amazing plates on their back. So well done if you guessed that from using your clues, that's amazing. And we've got one more fossil to have a guess at. So this time we're gonna guess what the animal is and what the fossil is. So which part of the animal we are looking at. So that's the picture of the fossil. And I've got some clues that I'm going to start giving you. So the first clue is that the animal was alive around here. So it, it's quite modern compared to the age of the earth. It was alive during the ice age. It's extinct now though, so we don't have them alive anymore. Well, fantastic, another correct guess, brilliant. So it has a flat side, which is very good for grinding plants, grass and seeds. Right here. And the last clue that I've got for you, we've got a very toothy grin. So what we have got here is one mammoth tooth. And I have the mammoth tooth here. You can see it's very big. So mammoths had eight of these teeth in their mouths. So eight of these molars. They had a flat side, which was very good at grinding. You can see it's the top of mine here. That's this top side here. And it, these pointed parts down here, these are actually the roots. So these are the bits that held the tooth in place so that it wouldn't just always fall out. Now, mammoths have got slightly different tooth set up to us as humans. As humans, we have baby teeth and then we lose our baby teeth and we get adult teeth. We have to look after those teeth for the rest of our lives because we'll never get any more. But with mammoths, they had six sets of teeth throughout its life, which means that it was replaced its teeth quite a lot, um, even as an adult mammoth. 
So here we have a picture of a woolly mammoth with these incredible tusks. These tusks are actually teeth which are growing on the outside of the, the mammoth's mouth, they've come out of the mouth. And there we have our little baby mammoth, which hasn't really started to grow its tusks much yet. You can see the tiny little starting of those tusks, which will start to grow as our mammoth gets older. So um, that is our tour of the um, fossil detectives. We've used fossils to work out how animals lived, to work out how an animal might have died, and to also work out what life was like in the past. Um, so thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, if you would like to know anything else um, about the museum or about any of the fossils that you've seen, you can type them into the chat box. I'll try and answer them uh, or um, Arona will answer as well. So any questions at all. And if not, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon to look at some of these fossils.